Good morning, everybody. Dr. G here on Saturday, what, March 21st. I uh, promised you that we would be doing a little something about a horse. This was my dad's favorite book, Old Bones, The Wonder Horse. It's written by Mildred Mastin Pace, and it's an old book, actually. This book, copyright 1955. That's older than our building, Hoover. <laughs> That's older than me. All right, here we go. The big horse sniffed the cool spring air and whinnied happily. <laughs> it was a clear, silvery April morning, a fine morning for running. It made the horse feel good. I feel good when I run. Mrs. Salt told me yesterday that she feels good when she runs, too. He snorted in high spirits and ran to the end of the paddock. He turned his head in the direction of the track. Oh, he could have kicked up his heels and cleared the fence and lit out alone, for he knew the way. But he didn't go. He stood waiting, feeling the pale warmth of the sun on his back, sniffing the air that was as sweet and fresh as spring water nibbling a little at the new grass drenched with dew. Soon the exercise boy came. The saddle was put in place and they were ready to go. The minute they hit the track, the horse knew that this morning the rider was going to give him his head, let him run as he wished. That he loved. Down the stretch, he pounded faster and faster, the stride strengthening, lengthening faster and faster, as fast as he wanted to go. Nothing, nobody holding him back. It was almost as good as running in a race. Well, at least it was the next best thing to running in a race. He hadn't had a chance to run in a race for quite some time now. Meanwhile, this exercise would have to do. Put the picture here. Me, huh? He ran joyously as if he would never stop. And when he did stop, his breathing was still light and steady, and he felt as if he could go on and on, running, never tiring, never breaking the rhythm of the running. I enjoy running, but I usually get really tired and I get out of breath. This horse, the wonder horse, doesn't seem to get out of breath. I wonder what kind of racehorse this horse is going to be if he doesn't seem to get tired. For three mornings in a row now, a man had leaned on the fence and watched him run. The horse did not know the man. This morning, the man left the fence and followed the horse and exercise boy back to the barn. In the barn, the grooms and other stable help treated the man with great respect. They said, Morning, Mr. Dan McDaniel. How are you, Mr. McDaniel? How's Sunbriar, Mr. McDaniel? Mr. McDaniel was one of the most famous racehorse trainers in the country. He was the trainer of the beautiful thoroughbred Sunbriar, the horse favored to win the Kentucky Derby. Now the men asked, you feel sure Sunbriar will win the Derby, Mr. McDaniel? Sure is a handsome horse, Sunbriar, isn't he, Mr. McDaniel? While he answered their questions and talked to the men, Mr. McDaniel's eyes never left the big horse he had followed into the barn. He was an awkward-looking animal, with bones jutting angrily under his chestnut coat. But Mr. McDaniel saw, too, the strong lines of his well-shaped head, the wisdom and understanding in the wide-set eyes. One of the grooms laughed and said, How come you're looking at old big bones over there? Ugliest thoroughbred anywhere around, isn't he? Mr. McDaniel said, Is that his name? Old Bones? But he isn't old, is he? Nah, he's a three-year-old. Matter of fact, we won't have his third birthday till the end of May. We just call him Old Bones on account of how he looks. His real name is Exterminator. But so far, he hasn't lived up to his name. <laughs> he's no Exterminator. He's Old Bones. Exterminator, huh? Yes, sir. Mr. Cal Millen owns him. He bought him as a yearling, and he had great hopes for him. Brought him home and asked Mrs. Millam to name him. Said this colt was going to grow up into a big, strong racehorse. 
told her to give him a name that would say he was going to kill off all the competition. So she named him Exterminator. Dun, dun, dun. Mr. McDaniel put a gentle hand on the big horse's bony withers. The horse liked the touch of his hand. He sniffed at the man's shoulder and bumped his nose against it. Mr. McDaniel smiled and rubbed the creature's head. Hasn't done much exterminating, though, the groom shrugged. Only ran four races all told, and he lost two. Hasn't raced at all this year. Mr. McDaniel rubbed the horse's nuz muzzle and said, He surely is well-mannered, quietest thoroughbred I think I ever saw. Then he said goodbye to the men and turned to leave. Old Bones whinnied softly after him. <coughs> he had liked his touch, the sound of his voice. McDaniel gave him a firm pat and said softly, so softly, only the horse heard him. I hope to be back, fella. Wish me luck. A groom following him to the barn door said, yes, he's quiet, but most folks, they don't like much of him on account of his looks. Old Bones was used to being told he was ugly, homely. For almost three years now, since the day he was born, been born, he had been called ugly. That's so sad. That is definitely not respectful. The few people who came to look at him when he was only a few hours old talked about it. How, they asked, how in the world could something as beautiful as fair Empress and a sire as handsome as McGee produce this scarecrow of a fowl? A foal, sorry. So they thought he looked like a scarecrow when he was born. That's horrible. Looks like he's built of kindling wood, nothing but bones. Maybe he'll grow up to his bones, it was hopefully suggested. No, this kind never does. He'll be nothing but bones all his life. Just bones. That was when they began calling him bones. The other foals had names that described them too. They were names like Star and Velvet, Little Bay, Beauty and Blaze. They were pet names given in admiration, but Bones was a homely name for a poor little homely foal. Once it looked as if the men were going to try to make him better looking, that was when he was a year old. He was put in a paddock alone, rubbed and curried and brushed and given special mashes to fatten him up. But a groom brushing him said, a man can't make pearly gates out of a mud fence. Oh, that's sad. A man can't make pearly gates out of a mud fence, and I can't make you look good, but you'll look your best when we take you up to Saratoga to be sold. A few weeks later at Saratoga, waiting to be auctioned off, scared, facing the biggest crowd of people he had ever seen, he heard, homely, isn't he? Looks like he's built of tent poles. Not much to look at, I say. And when the auctioneer banged down his gavel and yelled, sold! For $1,500, the crowd buzzed. Not bad for that colt. Not a big price, but not bad for such a low, homely one. Poor old bones. In spite of bones' appearance, his new owner had great plans for him. He made bones feel proud. But in the spring, bones became ill. Not until an operation was performed did he begin to gain strength. It was the end of June before he was able to run his first race. The day of his first race, what a great day that had been. Bones had never known such exhilaration, such pure joy. The sound of tense, quiet before the break, the burst of speed at the start, the running with the pack surrounded by thunder, pulling away, forcing more strength, more speed into the lengthening strides, the final burst of speed at the finish, the roars from the grandstands, the jockey's cries. Oh, this was why he had been born, to run like this. Three more times in the fall he ran, three glorious, wonderful times. Then he came up lame. He had not raced since. He'd been hurt. You better go see Mrs. White. Maybe she can give him some ice for his ankle. Now here he was, a three-year-old and few people had ever heard of Exterminator. 
Many who had known his name had forgotten he had ever raced, but Exterminator had not forgotten. Whenever he heard the bugle announce post time, <laughs> telling everyone a race was about to begin, he stood alone in the stall, trembling, hoping, waiting, his ears twitching, his breath coming faster. No, he would never forget. A groom came with fresh water. What on earth is Mr. Henry McDaniel looking you over for, he asked. Man like that's not hanging around a horse without something on his mind. Old Bones whinnied. <laughs> but he didn't give the groom an answer. So here we have this horse that some people thought was ugly. They're making fun of him, calling him Old Bones. He's had an operation. He ran a couple races, did nice, but then he couldn't because he got lame. His, his ankle got hurt. And his real name's Exterminator. But nobody's calling him that. They're calling him Old Bones. What do you think is going to happen? I wonder why this Mr. McDaniel seems to be interested in this horse. Well, we'll find out during episode two. Enjoy the rest of your day.